In the early 1800s, London had a problem. Quite a revolting problem. Who? It was everywhere. On the streets, leaking into your cellar, next door cesspits seeping through your walls. Neighbours were falling out frequently over whose poo was going where. And this was the age of cholera. If the poo contaminated your water supply, it could kill you. But in the early 1800s, people didn't know that. Thousands died. Eventually, this man stepped in. Joseph Bazalgette. Nobody has done more for London and the health and well-being of its citizens than Joseph Bazalgette. But before he was allowed to help anybody, London's problems had to get much worse. In fact, they reached a crisis. A poo crisis. It came in 1858, in what is known as the Great Stink. You see, because London streets were so disgusting, a few years earlier, the government passed a law saying that all sewage had to be washed into the Thames. The Thames became a thick bed of sludge consisting of thousands of tonnes of human faeces. Now, there was a little good news in all of this because the new Houses of Parliament had just been built. Where? On the bank of the River Thames. Parliament was completely overwhelmed by the stink and people thought that smells caused illness. So all the MPs thought they were being poisoned. And after years of doing almost nothing about it, and despite several cholera outbreaks, now they panicked that their lives were in danger and they acted with remarkable speed. In just 18 days, the Thames Purification Bill was conceived, debated and passed into law. And the stage was now set for railway engineer Joseph Bazalgette. A small man with a big moustache. It was his job to clean up London. But how'd you do that? Nobody had ever faced a challenge like this before. The expectation of an entire city rested on his tiny shoulders. And it was an enormous undertaking. His solution involved building over a thousand miles of sewers, connecting them all up to carry all of the sewage away. And he wanted it all to be powered by gravity. So the pipes had to be laid at a certain gradient to ensure the sewage would wash away and not back up. But gravity couldn't do the work by itself. And every so often there had to be pumping stations that would pump sewage up 40 feet and then use gravity again. It was an almost impossible task. And every stage of the project brought up a new technical challenge. Where there wasn't space to dig, he created new land. That's why London has the Victoria Embankment, the Albert Embankment and the Chelsea Embankment. 52 acres of reclaimed land housing sewers, gas pipes and an underground line, the district line. After 16 years, London had a sewer system fit for a modern city. It virtually eliminated cholera from London. And proof of that came in 1866, when the capital's last cholera outbreak was confined to the areas not yet connected to the new system. The Thames stopped smelling and poo was no longer a feature on London streets. And London still relies on a system, much of which was built 150 years ago. All thanks to the remarkable Sir Joseph Bazalgette. So say a little thank you the next time you flush at loo. Cheers. Mm.